Hi folks, welcome back to the Tabletop's Edge and our last Blitzkrieg campaign playthrough. Today we're continuing the 18th of December turn. Last episode we uh, went through the pre-turn phase and saw both sides receive substantial reinforcements. I want to say something like six and a half total divisions have now entered the battle. We saw the 2nd Infantry Division's woes continue up north, where they are still too disorganized to really get their units to do anything so far for these first three days. While Panzer Lair launched their first attack uh, into the right flank of 7th Armored Division, hammered it pretty hard and are driving on the headquarters of 7th Armored Division at Vilsalm. The Americans, however, were able to extract, at least for the moment, the remaining elements of the 112th Regiment from 28th Infantry Division. And we saw 12th SS Panzer have a rather disappointing uh, day, despite achieving the, uh, the near-term goals of capturing the Twin Villages and jumping the headquarters of the 99th Infantry Division. So we're getting back to the action now. We're going to pick up with the next American activation right after 12th SS. Now, while the Americans have received a number of reinforcements, it's going to take probably a couple of days for them to get into place and really start having an effect on the battle. In the meantime, the situation in the north here, particularly with 99th Infantry Division, has gotten uh, very serious. You see the headquarters... Uh, was jumped and decided to try to escape the uh, the pocket here. However, they still don't have a complete MSR because of uh, von der Heidt's uh, uh, lone unit down here blocking the road. Now, all of these units in here have no safe path to the headquarters. Uh, most of them are still just barely within command radius. And the 2nd Infantry Division is done for the turn. So 99th is going to have something like a minus six or seven, I think, for its snafu roll, which means it's not really going to be able to do much to help itself. That means we're looking at either 9th Infantry Division or more likely 1st Infantry Division having to um, come in and uh, rescue them, as it were. And before the situation gets much worse, because we still have, uh, in the north here, we've got the German 326th, the 277th, the 12th Volksgrenadier, 1st SS, and Piper all have yet to activate. And um, if they are allowed to activate before the Americans change the situation up here, that could be, uh, that could be pretty catastrophic. So for that reason, the Americans are going to go ahead and uh, try to get 1st Infantry Division here to activate. And this could be a make or break day for uh, the Americans in the North, depending upon uh, how, uh, how much 1st Infantry Division can, uh, can achieve. So let's go ahead and activate them and see what happens. Activating the 1st Infantry Division, we'll flip over the headquarters. And you can see we did attach the 99th Norwegian Independent uh, Motorized Infantry Battalion. And the rest of the division arrived, which did include a um, dual unit, Task Force Davison, as well as the 16th Infantry Regiment. All of those battalions, well, the 16th Infantry Regiment battalions arrived uh, down two steps. They also received a nice um, self-propelled tank destroyer battalion in the 703rd with an AV of four. So if we can ever get 1st Infantry Division into the action, it is, a, uh, it is a force to be reckoned with. So the trains are on map in the uh, entry hex located where the headquarters is. So we have a complete MSR. We are not going into a prepared defense. That's gonna take us to the snafu roll. We have a fatigue level of one, as you see on the HQ card here. They're not marked coordination, they're not mixed. Game specific is a minus one, so that brings us to a minus two already. The trains are always considered at optimal distance when they are in an entry hex and less than 15 hexes from the uh, HQ, or technically I guess it's 15 hexes or less from the, uh, from the headquarters. So that brings it to a minus one. They're not ghosted, we're not crossing any streams, and we're not using tracks. So we actually have a minus one, which gives us a, uh, one of the better chances the U.S. has had at getting a full activation here. So we need to, um, we, we really, we need two full activations, but we'll take at least one. And thought it was going to happen, but no. The six minus one is a five. That's a partial activation. 
which is going to yield one objective marker. We have four organic and two um, assigned artillery points. One of the three uh, artillery points the U.S. received as reinforcements this turn was assigned to the 1st Infantry Division uh, for a couple of reasons, but um, not the least of which is should they receive a partial result, they will at least have three uh, artillery points instead of having five and rounding down to two. Uh, we are going to place our objective marker, and unfortunately, the only place we can really go with it is right here on Vonderheit's unit. With, uh, with them, some luck, we'll be able to clear them out and uh, be done with Vonderheit opening up the uh, the roads to the south here and just off screen to the uh, north you can you can actually kind of see a uh, comp group of Knittel here from first ss but piper's troops are just off screen to the north here and the rest of first ss is uh, over here so we would like to be able to in this activation today get first infantry to uh, eliminate Vonderheit and then move forward preferably south of uh, the town of uh, Zauerbrot there, and uh, start to get engaged with the uh, with the first SS and uh, try to stabilize at least this portion of the uh, northern shoulder. So without much ado, let's get right into it. Um, we might as well go ahead and make the attack here first, and we'll do that with um, we'll do that with third battalion of the 18th. He's going to go one half one. And we'll bring up um, first battalion. That's going to be one to move there, two. And now let's see who has the least losses. Um, first of the 18th has five steps, er, as does third. So it's not going to really matter. So we'll go ahead and make the attack with the first battalion, assisted by the third battalion. And we will spend one of our artillery points in a. Um, Suppression Barrage, there's two steps in that uh, unit. Now, on the other hand, if we were to spend all three, are we going to, are we going to be able to actually get into combat with anybody else this turn? Actually, uh, no, I don't think so because we don't have any recon units that can place another objective marker. You can see this is the only attack within um, the objective zone. If I run this as a suppression barrage, it would be four, no double objective, uh, we, have, we have support would be five, no double objective zone, six, seven, eight for the assist. And these guys are looking at a two, three, so it'd be a plus five. If instead we, um, we spent all three points as a destruction barrage, it would be a four, five, or six to score a hit. We'd need to score two hits and that would then uh, make it a four, five, six to three. It'd only be a plus three on the, uh, so a plus five to a plus three. And this is, again, is one of the interesting little decisions that BCS forces you to make as you, uh, as you're playing here. And I don't know that there's necessarily always a right decision. You just uh, have to Go with what you think is best and then live with the consequences. In order to actually kill this unit outright, we would need a 13 or better on the combat table. With the plus five, that's an eight on the dice or better. So just a little less than a 50-50 chance of killing him outright versus uh, having to get uh, two hits on our artillery barrage and then rolling and Okay, let's go ahead and spend all three, see what happens here. This may not be the right decision, but first we'll, run, we'll shoot our artillery at him. Again, he's in terrain, so it's a four, five, or six, and that did end up being the right decision as both of the first two shots hit. That's going to kill both steps, and that will eliminate Vonderheit's last unit. And then first infantry will advance into the swamps. So, while we had a disappointing snafu roll, the attack at least went off as, uh, as it should have. And that's going to allow the rest of the division to slowly make its way forward. We'll bring up, um, actually, 
the rest is pretty much going to be just an exercise in movement. So I'm going to cut it here. I'll go ahead and mark von der Heidt's losses, and I'll come back and show you what uh, the end of the activation looks like once the entire formation has moved. Here's how the situation appears at the end of the activation with the uh, 1st Infantry Division moving forward. You can see the 16th and the uh, Engineer Battalion that arrived as reinforcements today are slowly making their way up the highway. The headquarters has moved further south here uh, to extend its command radius uh, well past the, uh, the northern route here where we want the uh, uh, Americans to eventually cut. Uh, the two motorized elements in the division have uh, moved forward. The 99th Norwegians have moved down and actually are exerting a zone of control here into Malmedy across the stream. Task Force Davison proceeded down the secondary road here through Sauerbrot and has established a blocking position uh, where its uh, zone of control will prevent anybody from just uh, driving straight up either the roads this way from the south or first SS if they uh, try to drive to the uh, to the west here. Other than that, uh, again, the infantry is slowly moving up. We decided to place a couple of battalions from the 26th Regiment into move mode and have them um, advance further south, screened by the, uh, by the motorized uh, Norwegians. Now, there are no isolation effects to, uh, to implement, so we go straight to the fatigue roll. They made one attack, so a three or less will increase their fatigue and they roll a four. So they remain at fatigue level one, and now the headquarters has a four, five, or six to uh, get a second activation, which would come in incredibly handy right now for the Americans. And indeed, they get the five for a second activation. The snafu roll should be pretty much the same as it was for the first activation. They have a... Uh, Fatigue level of one, they're not marked coordination and they're not mixed. The game specific makes it a minus two. They are still at optimal distance back here to the trains in the entry hex. So that makes it a minus one. Trains are not ghosted and we're not crossing the streams and we're not using tracks. So a minus one again. And uh, once again, a full activation would be nice. And indeed, that's exactly what they get. So it seems that once they... Uh, uh, cleared von der Heitz troopers out of the terrain here. I think they are a little more confident in being able to move further south, knowing that the area in the uh, Hoesven is, uh, is secure. So that's going to give us two uh, objective markers to place. It's also going to give us a full six artillery points to use if we can get some spotters adjacent to uh, some Germans in, um, in objective zones. So this will take probably a minute or two to think about as to where we want to place our objective markers. So I'll cut it here and we'll pick back up uh, momentarily. Here's what the situation looks like after the division has moved. Now we're not quite done with the activation yet. I've saved the uh, interesting bits here for the, uh, for the end. We essentially had the uh, 99th Norwegian Battalion uh, dismount and swing around here to get into a roadblock position west of Malmody. And then the 26th Infantry Regiment has moved up. They've got a zone of control exerted on Malmody and the uh, hex east of there. We've placed our two objective markers in different hexes. And this is because we're not planning on making any actual uh, regular attacks. Instead, we're going to use our six artillery points in uh, destruction barrages outside of combat. So we wanted to maximize the number of German units we can hit with artillery. So we split the, uh, the objective markers and we've got one kind of big giant objective zone in this area here. The uh, 18th Regiment has moved up here and we have the 16th 
sort of acting as the uh, divisional reserve. Davison remained where he was. He simply uh, flipped over to his deployed side, which you can see gives him a nice AV rating of four and an action rating of four as well. And he's sort of watching both of these tracks to the, uh, to the east. We don't want the 1st Infantry Division to get much further to the east because then they'll end up mixing and uh, coordinating with 2nd and 99th Infantry Divisions. This is the headquarters of the 99th right here. So basically from this rail line you see running north-south here, from that rail line over to about here, almost to this other rail line, that's going to be the 1st Infantry Division sector, at least for now. Um, the situation is not good on the Elsenborn Ridge because of the disorganization in the 2nd and 99th Infantry Divisions, but uh, at least the 1st has uh, been able to move up and is starting to form a semblance of a line here in preparation for a uh, hopefully a push southward uh, tomorrow. But we uh, oh also uh, wanted to note that we did uh, move the trains up, and we do have the headquarters deployed fairly far forward, and that's to be able to... Uh, to keep the trains at an optimal distance while also getting them off of this uh, this road here that leads back. The uh, trains for the 99th are in Zarabrot here. By moving the 1st Infantry Division trains up this road and basically assigning this highway to 1st Infantry Division, this will allow 99th to push their trains a little further back down the road without worrying about these two crossing the streams. Uh, 99th is going to have um, enough negative snafu modifiers as it is, so we don't want to, if we can avoid any additional ones, we're gonna try and do that. Now, we've got six artillery points, and we are going to launch some destruction barrages on Piper. We'll start, we'll work west to east, and we're gonna start with the uh, Panzer Grenadiers here in Malmedy. It's a red city. We are going to use two artillery points, uh, thanks to the game-specific a uh, special rule that allows the Americans to uh, expend two instead of one point in a destruction barrage outside of combat. Unfortunately, we are going to need a five or six to inflict a step loss. And welcome to the battle, 1st Infantry Division. Big Red One strikes hard and fast. That's two step losses to uh, 9 and 12 companies of the 2nd Battalion. They're only a four-step unit, so with that artillery barrage... We just cut that uh, unit strength in half. We are now going to continue with Kampfgruppe Spitze. They are merely in terrain, so that's going to be a uh, four, five, or six. We're gonna spend two points to bombard them. And we get one hit on Spitze. And then finally, we're gonna use our last two artillery points on the Panzer Grenadiers over here underneath the other objective marker. And uh, they are actually in the open, so that's going to be a three or better. And unfortunately, uh, only one hit there. So I think you can maybe start to get a little bit of appreciation of what a uh, what a U.S. formation with uh, with its artillery. Uh, can do to the Germans. Uh, we just inflicted what four step losses from uh, from Piper here without uh, without losing any American steps. So that's half of the non-AV replacement points that the Germans will receive next turn. Uh, with that, I think we are going to wrap up the activation. We have no isolation effects. And now we roll for uh, fatigue. We placed objective markers, so that would be, actually this is a second activation, so it's a one or two. And the four means that they will remain at fatigue level one. So the Americans uh, finally see their luck start to turn around a little bit here on the 18th with the 1st Infantry Division finally getting into the fight. They actually managed to get a full activation on their second activation and uh, uh, gave Piper a bit of a bloody nose. So It'll be interesting to see what the Germans decide to do uh, to do now, and we'll throw it back to them. From the German perspective, I think maybe you're seeing why I really do not like this northern route here. It's just simply too easy for the Americans to get down and interdict it, and they can reach it so uh, so quickly too, because now we've got an issue where we've got American. Um, 
infantry battalions here on the road that we're going to have to attack and push off of there. We're going to have to push them back actually to a, a line about like this, which not only is that going to have us attacking northward instead of driving westward like we want to do, we could possibly lose some uh, units in the process, but then we would have to actually hold this line in order to keep this uh, to keep this road open. And you saw what happened with the 1st Infantry Division's um, activation there where they killed four steps. Another two activations like that, and the only units Piper's going to have left are his two uh, Panzer Battalions. So we need to get some bullet catchers up here. That's uh, where 3rd Falschenbeger probably will come in. Uh, to, uh, to hold the line and keep this road open, but it's gonna take time for this formation to get up here and get into position, and it's time the Germans really don't have. Meanwhile, we, we don't wanna leave Piper here exposed to the deadly fire of the Americans. We've gotta keep him moving, but he cannot continue to move until we at least get the, uh, the road back further east here cleared, which, with the predicament that the 99th Infantry Division is now in, should not be that difficult. 12th Volksgrenadier should be able to um, clear the road, and between um, 12th SS and 12th Volksgrenadier, 99th, they should be able to sort of gobble up uh, most of that formation. There's not a lot the Americans can do up here in the north, so the, the Germans really aren't prioritizing moving any formations up here right now. They have a lot to do up here. Don't misunderstand me. There's a lot of important stuff that needs to happen up here. It's just that the ability of the Americans to uh, preempt what the Germans want to do up here is now kind of severely restricted. So uh, priority-wise, we can, we can look elsewhere for a formation to activate. One thing that's concerning me a bit is, uh, number one, we've got uh, another group of American units here that we kind of need to clear out. We've got Sanvit, but it doesn't do us any good if the roads leading to it and through it are not clear of the enemy. Also, we have a single Pioneer Battalion from the 116th Panzer that's holding the town. There are a lot of Americans here, and they're not necessarily bad troops, particularly CCB of the uh, 9th Armored Division. They could get lucky, make an attack, and all they have to do is retreat those pioneers out of there, uh, which is easier than, um, well, it's going to be easier than if they were in a prepared defense, much easier, in fact. So I'm a little concerned about um, beefing up the defenses of Sanvit. Now that we've taken it, we want to make sure that we hold on to it. And that task is going to be assigned to uh, 62nd Folks Grenadier Division. So I'm leaning very heavily towards activating 62nd. Another possible uh, candidate to be activated now is the 560th Folks Grenadier. I know these are not uh, two of the sexier formations uh, the Germans have right now in the game, but uh, you saw what happened to the 116th Panzer when they were uh, extended and unsupported, and we don't want the same thing to happen to Lair out there. So we could activate 560th and have them move uh, to the west here and fill in the gap between 2nd Panzer and uh, Lair to the north. We also have 150th Panzer. It's a small unit, but uh, they could always drive up here and try and engage CCB of the 9th. CCB of the 9th has not gone yet, so... There's still a force we need to uh, take into consideration. And with that said, I don't know necessarily that I want to move 2nd Panzer Division yet, given what's going on here with CCR. So I think we are going to come back and uh, maybe go ahead and activate 62nd Volksgrenadier here and see if we can't start um, cleaning up the mess here and maybe solidify our grip on uh, Sanvit. Activating 62nd Volksgrenadier, we'll go ahead and turn the headquarters over. Their uh, trains are on map. They are just off screen here to the southeast. They are at optimal distance. We have a complete MSR. We're not going to place 62nd into a uh, prepared defense just yet because they are hopefully going to be able to make some attacks in this area here on the uh, American refugees from the 106th. So with that said, it's time to move on to the snafu roll. They are not marked with coordination. You can see, though, that they do have a fatigue level of 2, which is going to be a minus 2. 
They're not mixed. They get a plus one from the game turn to bring it to a minus one. The trains are at optimal distance, which makes it even. They're not ghosted. They're not crossing the streams and they're not using track. So it's a uh, just a straight up um, plus zero to the snafu roll. And an eight on the snafu roll is good enough for a full activation. That'll be two objective markers, which I think they will place. The question is, where do we want to place them? I think if we place them both right there, we should be able to cover most of what we want to do. That's going to cover these five American units. We won't be able to um, attack the uh, second of the 424th here, but that's okay because we're going to be shifting uh, to the west side of the Ur River here. We'll leave the uh, east bank for... Uh, for the 18th Volks Grenadier. Now, uh, I had mentioned the uh, defense of saint -Vite, and I'm gonna do something that I really hate to, to do, but it's not really avoidable in this situation. And uh, we're gonna end up mixing some, uh, some of our units here, or some of our formations. So we'll bring this battalion up, one, two, three, and a half, that is going to coordinate both the 116th Panzer and the 62nd Volksgrenadier. And we are also now mixed. And it's going to, it's gonna actually continue. Uh, let's see, we're gonna bring up the uh, this Pioneer. We don't necessarily want that guy. Yeah, let's bring up this guy instead. Let's see, he's gonna go one, two, three, four. And now we'll move the headquarters and the pioneers. We'll go one, two, three. Let's see, what do we have? One, yep. One, two, three, and a half. And they will occupy some feet. Now for the rest of the division moving up, um, that's three, Four. So we'll go across three, four. Bring him up. That's uh, one, two, three, four. And what do we want to do here? That'll be one, four. think one two three four five six I think we'll bring the now well, let's see one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven twelve thirteen fourteen fifteen the combat trains are still just at uh, the max optimal distance range I think we're gonna leave them there maybe for the next uh, activation if I was considering moving them up shortening up the tail here and bringing them up here to Steinerbrook but that would ghost them which would inflict a minus one snafu modifier and uh, 60 seconds already gonna have a minus one from their coordination as well as possibly an additional minus one if they remain mixed with uh, 1 16th uh, at the start of their next activation. So I think we'll leave the trains where they are for the moment. We do have some attacks to make. Now the um, division has three organic and two assigned Artillery points for a total of five. And we've got one, two, three. We've got four American units that we can shoot at. I think, though, we are going to make an actual attack. Mm. Let's go ahead and...
go ahead and spend one point for suppression barrage here. We're going to make an attack. The second of the 190th is going to attack, assisted by the uh, Ersatz Battalion. And it's got an action rating of two. They do have red support for three, double objective zone four, five, six for the artillery, and uh, seven for the assist. The Americans have an action rating of one. They have, uh, they're unprepared, so there's no support available. They're not in prepared defense, but they are in terrain, which makes it a two. It's gonna be a plus five on the combat table for the attack. And a nine becomes a 14, which is a D2 and automatic retreat. They are not completely zocked in. They do have a re uh, retreat path, a uh, safe path out that way. So with that, it'll be two and they will go back to the uh, headquarters uh, refuge, which is going to place them all the way over here. I think we'll set them right there. Let me uh, let me go ahead and mark the uh, losses there, and uh, then we will pick back up with uh, the remainder of uh, 62nd Volksgrenadier. With that out of the way, we will continue, and I think we're done with our actual attacks. We'll just take a couple of artillery shots here. We're going to spend one point to uh, barrage the first of the 424th. They are in terrain, so it will be a four, five, or six to score a hit. A one is a miss. We're gonna do the same thing here, spend another point on uh, the Armored Infantry Battalion of CCB uh, of the 9th Armored. They are in terrain as well. Uh, that five does mean a step loss. And then our last, or well, our last barrage will be on the uh, armored units here of CCB. They are a hard unit, which means, uh, as indicated by the yellow um, unit symbol, which means only a six will inflict a step loss. And a four misses. Um, I think that's going to do it for 60 seconds. Uh, first activation here. We'll clean up the objective markers. I think that's it. The coordination is going to stay. Um, fatigue, there's no isolation effect, so fatigue is a three or less, and the five means they're going to remain at fatigue level two. Now the question becomes, do we want to um, try to get a second activation? And I don't think so. I think we will be content to let uh, 62nd Volksgrenadier just have a single activation for today. We could attempt to uh, get a second activation. They would need a five or six. Uh, that would also automatically give us a chance of increasing their fatigue to fatigue level three. They, um, they've kind of achieved what we wanted them to. They've got some units in and around Saint-Vite, which should allow the 116th uh, Panzer to recall their Pioneer Battalion and move out of the uh, move out of the area when 116th activates. So we'll be content with that for today, and it is back to the Americans. For the Americans, the situation in the north still remains rather grim. It's been stabilized a little bit here to the west with the um, arrival of 1st Infantry Division. We still have 30th Infantry Division that is arriving this turn, and we'd like to get them down and into position as well. There's not much I think 99th is going to be able to do this turn, so we're not in a real big hurry to get them activated. And same thing with the situation around Saint-Vite here uh, with 106, the um, CCB of the 9th and 106 are still cut off with uh, no uh, complete MSR, uh, which means their chances of actually activating and doing anything are pretty slim. I think instead what the Americans are going to do is come around to the southern sector, and they're gonna take advantage of the opportunity given them by the Germans, focusing up north, to go ahead and get 101st Airborne into a little better situation. Now granted, they arrived used, so a four, five, or six. They are fresh, however, so a three or better to get a second activation, but I think it might, uh, I think that taking the chance might be uh, might be worth it at this point because if we can get the 101st into 
a better position down here, it's going to make it a lot tougher for the Germans in the south. So let's see if we can get 101st to, uh, to get a second activation. All right, as mentioned, it is a four, five, or six, and we're going to get a plus one for fresh fatigue level uh, for the second activation. Here we go. And good news is the fresh gave them the plus one, which allows them to get their second activation going. Their trains are on map. You can see them out here to the southwest. They are, however, ghosted. It's a second activation, which means we cannot enter prepared defense. So we're going to go straight to the snafu roll. They're going to get a plus one for being fresh. They're not marked coordination. They're not mixed. Uh, but the game specifics uh, DRM is a minus one, bringing them back to even. The trains are at optimal distance for plus one, but they're ghosted, which brings them back down to even. They're not crossing the streams or using tracks. So a straight up roll here for 101st. They get a five, which is only a partial activation, which I don't think is too big a deal because we're not looking at uh, making uh, any attacks with this activation nor are we necessarily looking at uh, you know driving off to the uh, to the east or west any great distance so i think half movement should suffice for us and we will not be placing any objective markers means this is going to be kind of a non-combat activation so I'll go ahead and get everybody moved into the positions and I'll show you what uh, the situation looks like once, uh, once 101st Airborne has uh, finished its activation. Here we are after the, uh, or at the conclusion of the activation. You can see we were able to push a couple of battalions uh, out to the east here as far as Majore. And this is also where there is a, uh, an engineer detachment and the trains for the 112th Infantry Regiment, whose uh, headquarters is now uh, further northeast up the N12. They've also pushed a battalion all the way out here to Bertone, which is on the uh, road from uh, leading from Hufalis westward. So they are able to cover, uh, they're basically covering the secondary road here, as well as the highway south from Hufalis and the N12 coming down from uh, San Viet. And they've got the secondary road south of the River Wilts here, also uh, covered as they've pushed uh, the perimeter out to the uh, to the southeast as well. Trying to set up um, a defense in depth here, the idea being to make it uh, slow for the Germans to kind of chew their way into, uh, into the defenses. Now, all we need is to hold off the Germans until we get a chance to activate on the 19th when we can go ahead and throw these guys into a prepared defense, which will make them much more difficult to uh, try and dig out of their respective positions here. And then it'll be a matter of uh, holding on. So 101st Airborne done for the uh, done for the 18th. However, we do need to roll for Fatigue, even though we didn't place any objective markers or make any attacks because this is a second activation and that's going to be a one or a two to lose their fresh status. And sure enough, the one will get rid of their fresh and give them fatigue level zero. That's not a huge deal. I don't know how much uh, or how many second activations we're going to be trying to get out of 101st Airborne. Uh, and if they are in a prepared defense, then uh, the best result they can hope for in a snafu table is a partial anyway. So um, I'm not terribly disappointed with losing the fresh. It was bound to happen at some point. Uh, more important, I think, to get the uh, division into a little better disposition here to meet the uh, coming German attack. And so with that, uh, very quick activation for 101st, and we're heading back to the Germans now. For the Germans, they are considering activating either 2nd uh, Panzer here around Clairvaux, or now that 62nd Volksgrenadier has relieved them in the uh, in, at saint uh perhaps activating the 116th Panzer and uh, consolidating the position and maybe trying to strike back at 7th Armored up there, keeping the pressure on them that uh, Lair uh, applied earlier in the day. I think, though, I think we are going to go ahead and uh, I think we are going to activate 2nd Panzer here and get them get them moving. 
What we would like to do actually is eliminate this nuisance of CCR of the uh, 9th Armored Division. If we can get those guys out of there, that's one less thing to worry about. It uh, will then open up uh, some uh, room for us to keep moving west, whether that be southwest down towards uh, Bastogne or maybe out towards uh, Hoofalis here. So we'll see. Uh, let's go ahead and activate 2nd Panzer Division. Activating 2nd Panzer, we're going to flip the headquarters over here. The trains are on map right here, as you can see. They are ghosted, but we do have a complete MSR. We are not going into prepared defense, so now it's time to look at the snafu modifiers. They are not fresh anymore. They're not marked coordination. They have a fatigue level of zero. They are not mixed. Uh, they get plus one for game specific, plus two for optimal distance, back to plus one for the trains being ghosted. They are not crossing the streams or using tracks. So it's uh, plus one on the snafu roll. And a 10 will give them a full activation. Full activation is um, going to give them a total of three organic plus two assigned arty points. That makes it a total of five for the activation. They get two objective markers. And where are we going to place those? Uh, as I mentioned, uh, they, I think, are going to focus on trying to complete the destruction of CCR of the 9th Armored Division. And that means uh, we're going to have to make probably an attack here on Booth. But we're going to do a double objective zone up here on the north uh, portion of the... Uh, of the Americans here. We can engage rows outside of the objective zone, so I'm not terribly worried about that. And let's see, with that, I'm gonna take a minute or two here and figure out how we're gonna go about doing this, and then we will, uh, and then we'll get going. All right, I think we're gonna start off the activation by flipping 1st Battalion of the 3rd Panzer Regiment into its deployed side, and then we're gonna move up the tracks here for two. Where we're going to have to stop, we have two AV ZOCs, one from Harper, one from the support unit with uh, Task Force Booth. We have a required engagement against Harper, so we will do that one uh, first. We have nine plus one for the double objective zone, gives the Germans a 10. We got AV4, AR26, so it's a plus four on the uh, engagement table. An eight becomes a 12, which is a target loss and retreat. Now, this is one of the dangers of stacking uh, infantry units with dual or AV units. The entire stack needs to retreat, even though it was just Harper that was engaged. So <clears throat> they're both going to go three hexes uh, locally to the rear, which one, two, we'll put them here on these railroad tracks. And that's used the first fire event for uh, first of the third. They will then engage the support of Task Force Booth. And again, they're going to have a 5 plus 4 is 9, plus 1 for the double objective zone is a 10. Booth has an action rating of 2, and the support unit for CCR of the 9th has an AV of 3. So that is a total of five from 10, leaves a plus five, and we're rolling on the targeted support line. A good roll of a nine, plus five becomes a 14. That's gonna be target loss and drop. And the support unit for uh, CCR only has a single step, so uh, Charlie Company is destroyed. We'll remove him. That's going to drop support from the uh, entire formation until um, until they can rebuild that, if they choose to rebuild that. And that's going to stop the Panzers where they are, having used both of their fire events. Next, we will bring up the Bicycle Battalion here. Now go one, two, three. We're going to move here for four, and then we're going to attack uh, Task Force Booth with first of the 304th, supported by the uh, Panzer Battalion here. We're going to spend one 
I think, um, yeah, one artillery point for suppression. Booth is not very big. It's only a two-step uh, unit, which always tempts me to just try to blast them with a destruction barrage. And I don't think they've taken any losses as of yet. So um, actually, uh, you know what? Let's just use three and we will blast them with, uh, with a destruction barrage. They are in terrain, so it's going to be a four, five, or six to inflict a step loss. And the first two shots will do it. Actually, I think they only had one step remaining. So Booth has been destroyed, and the Panzer Grenadiers will occupy the village at the crossroads there. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and pause here to record the American losses, and then we'll continue. Next up, I think we're going to bring forward uh, Kampfgruppe Gutmann, and he will engage uh, Task Force Rose here. And how do we want to do this? I guess we'll um, bring him this way. That's one, two three and a half. Stopping there, he has AV4 plus AR4 is an eight to an AV4 action rating two, six. So it's a plus two on the engagement. It's not a very good roll. Four plus two becomes a six. That's a both loss. So a step loss for Rose and for Gutmann. And then he will expend his second uh, fire event to do the same thing at another plus two. And it's going to be a seven, which is again, a both loss. So two step losses uh, for Gutmann and Rose. Now, hopefully, uh, second battalion of the third Panzer can move up and administer the coup de grace here. One, two, three, four. Stopping here, he is a, he's an action rating three. I'm sorry, X rating four, AV three, seven, and uh, Rose is a six, so it's only a plus one this time on the engagement. Uh, that six, however, is good enough to become a seven. That's a both loss. So that's going to um, eliminate the last step of Rose, and it's going to inflict a step loss on the second battalion. So even though Rose was destroyed, in uh, those engagements, they actually um, took as many uh, German AV steps with them as they lost. So I think the Americans will take that any day and even exchange with uh, tank on tank combat. That was uh, four movement points for the second battalion here. He's going to go five and a half and jump the 112th headquarters. I think the 112th headquarters, now that they've got their battalion sort of in the clear. They're just gonna go, uh, where are they gonna go? They'll go back somewhere over here. Going to have to mark them coordinated. Um, flip the trains, which are down here in Majore, and there's no prepared defense to, uh, to lose. That's gonna be six. And while we're at it, we'll go seven, eight uh, to jump CCR of the ninth. Where do we want to put these guys? The only unit CCR still has left on the map is Task Force Harper up here. They've got to go three steps. Maybe they will maybe they'll come back here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. That's going to... Two, three, four, five. That's so that's doable still for Harper. He's going to have to be marked coordinated as well. And we will flip the trains located in Hoofalese over to their ghost side. And again, no prepared defense. Let me go ahead and grab a couple of coordination markers and then we'll continue. All right, now that both of the uh, jumped HQs are marked, we can continue. Second Battalion 
has spent eight movement points so far. So continuing, they'll go, um, let's bring them back to the road here. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, where they will enter an AV zone of control from uh, the uh, support of uh, one tenth regiment. And I think they will do an engagement to attempt to drop that support. They have three plus four is seven. The action rating unit of the Americans is a four. They have an AV of three, and they actually get a plus one for multiple support. So it's actually gonna be seven minus eight to minus one on the targeted support line. And not a good roll from the Germans. That becomes a four, which is no result. That will bring the uh, Germans to a stop as well since that was their second fire event. So now we will move up uh, Von Bohm. We'll go one, two, three, four and a half. And what's rolling for? Let's go seven and a half here. And he will, ah, let's see, he's going to have to, um, engage them as well to try and drop that support in order to place a, um, actually, let's step back one here. And now Von Bohm will attempt to place a uh, an objective marker. He'll need a five or less. And he gets a five. And he can place the objective marker anywhere within two hexes. So now we'll place it here and then he will continue and with his second fire event, I think we're going to take a chance and engage the support again here, see if we can drop it. This time it's a minus two, so he will have to roll an eight or better to uh, drop the support. And if he rolls a five or less, he's looking at a uh, step loss. And it turns out to be neither. Seven minus two is a five. So that's a no result. <clears throat> and that's his second uh, fire event bringing him to a stop. However, we will now actually make an attack here. Let me shift this a bit so the glare is not quite so bad. And we will spend one of our remaining two artillery points in a suppression barrage. We have an action rating of five. The unit is dual, making it six. There's no double objective zone, but it's seven, eight for the artillery suppression, nine for the assist. The Americans have an action rating of four. The one-tenth is not in prepared defense. He does have support though, which makes it a five, and he is in terrain for six. We got a nine minus six is a plus three on the uh, combat table. And an ugly roll. Uh, four plus three becomes a seven. That's going to be a step loss to the attacker, a situational retreat, and traffic. Now, the defenders are not in prepared defense, so they will retreat three hexes and flip to their move side. That's going to bring them to three. Four, one, two, three. We'll put them here at Obervampak. And Von Bohm will enter the hex, take a step loss, and I'll need to mark that with traffic. So let me grab a traffic marker and uh, mark the results. That was a successful delaying action by 2nd Battalion here, the 110th. They managed to um, get away without suffering any losses. They inflicted a step loss on the attackers as well as uh, clogging up that hex with, uh, with traffic. So the only thing remaining here for 2nd Panzer is to move up the rest of their Panzer Grenadier Battalions. We've got a few of them back here. So we'll just go one, two, three, four. I think we will... That's not going to do too much good, is it? Yeah, well, we're going to flip the 2nd Battalion, 2nd Panzer Grenadier Regiment over to their uh, move side. One, two, is that right? Make sure track, yep. 
one, two, three, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, five, and one, two, three, four. And I think we will continue to move the headquarters forward up here to the pioneers. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go ahead and we'll bring the trains forward as well and bring them to the west side of uh, Clairvaux. Again, um, just trying to keep this logistical tale short for the time being, uh, as we have some uh, units uh, behind 2nd Panzer that are moving up as well. I think that's it. That's all of the units in the formation that have moved. So we'll go ahead and clean up from the activation. And let's see. We need to roll for fatigue. They made a couple of attacks, so three or less. That is a one, which increases their fatigue level from zero to one. And now we need to determine if we want to try and get a second activation. And um, yeah, let's go for it. Why not? We're going to try and get a second activation here. We need a four, five, or six for second Panzer. They get a Four, which is going to do it. Now for the uh, snafu, we know the trains are on the map right here. We have a complete MSR, <clears throat> no prepared defense. So uh, we're not marked with coordination. We have a fatigue level of one now, that's minus one, not mixed. Uh, game specific brings it to zero. Optimal distance is plus one, but they're ghosted back to zero. They're not crossing the streams or using tracks. So just a Straight up roll for Snafu. And they managed to get good enough. That's going to be a full activation. Two objective markers and full movement. Now we have to really uh, kind of think about what we might want to do here. Uh, as you can see, they're starting to approach uh, the outer defenses of Bastogne here. Um, this is the remnant of uh, CCR of the 9th, still within striking distance of the uh, Panzer Battalion up there, but you can see they're that way and Bastogne is this way. So what do we want to do with 2nd Panzer Division? Which direction do we head? We're not going to need any objective marker uh, back up here uh, to engage Harper. So if we place any objective markers, which I think we are likely to do. It'll probably be down here in this direction. The question is, how far do we want to um, how far do we want to advance to the southwest here? Do we want to bump up against the 101st Airborne before we have the division completely assembled? Um, we're definitely not going to take Bastogne on the march. That's for sure. On the other hand, 101st is not yet in a prepared defense, which is going to make it easier to move them out of the positions they're in so we might not or so we might be able to make a little bit of headway into the defenses um interesting situation all right i think what we're going to do is uh, go for it we're going to press forward we're going to place both of the objective markers down here in the lower left corner of the screen this is the uh this is majore it's the uh, first position of the uh, 101st along the uh, N-12 highway. The 2nd Battalion or the 110th uh, being retreated and placed on its move side no longer has an, a zone of control. So the, the highway is free for now and we might um, we might have Von Bohm drop off a uh, recon or an objective marker um, as they uh, as they drive by allowing some of the follow-on infantry to maybe make an assault against uh, against the 2nd Battalion and clean that up. So let's, um, let's see. Let me take a look at this, and once we get a plan together, we'll go ahead and uh, pick up with the, uh, with the activation. All right, I think what we're going to do is... Um, Start off here again with the 2nd Battalion of the 3rd Panzer Regiment. Bring them one, two, three, and a half. And they'll enter the AV Zoc from the uh, 101st Airborne there. 
and they will do a stopping engagement even though it's not required. They're going to have three plus four, seven plus one for the double objective zone is an eight. The Americans have an action rating of five and they have an AV in their support unit of a two. So that's going to be seven. Eight minus seven is a plus one on the targeted support line. Uh, six is uh, becomes a seven, and that is a target drop. So they've managed to at least drop the support temporarily of that unit, and they will go ahead and spend their second fire event in an attack by fire. We have uh, the airborne unit as well as an engineer company here, so each uh, unit will suffer uh, one attack, and they are in terrain, so it's going to be a five or six. I'm just going to roll them both together. The red die will be the airborne die, and the white die will be the engineer die. Looking for a five or six, and uh, probably would have had those, preferred to have those reversed, but the engineers will take one step loss, reducing them to two steps. That's going to stop the uh, panzers there as they used their second fire event. We'll mark them as such. And that was the 158th Engineers. Mark that down real quick here, 158th. That's their first step loss. Now, um, I think we'll bring Von Bohm up here. And he is going to attempt to place an objective marker. Again, five or less. Three is uh, success. So he will place one on the second battalion there. And he'll continue moving here for one. And two, three, four, six, eight. He has one fire event remaining. He's going to go ahead and um, use that to attack by fire the Hex, just like the uh, Panzers did. And again, the red die will be the um, Airborne Battalion. And we get opposite results there. So that will be one step loss inflicted on 2nd of the 501st. And now Von Bohm is stopped. But that will not prevent him from making a uh, making an attack. And let's bring the card back in here where we can see it. Also, with our full snafu result, we have five uh, points. We're going to spend just one in a suppression barrage. The attack is going to be action rating five. Duel is six. Double objective zone 7, 8, 9 for suppression, 10 for the assist from the Panzers. The Americans have an action rating of 5. They lost their support. They're not in prepared defense. There are two units and exactly two units in the hex, which becomes a 6. And they are in terrain for 7. So 10 to 7 is a plus 3 on the combat table. Let's see how the attack goes here. The attack, uh, it's a fair roll. It's an 8. That becomes an 11. That's going to be uh, good enough. Uh, it's uh, one defender step loss and an automatic retreat. So with that, uh, we will have the engineers take a step loss, a second step loss. The retreat is going to take second of the 501st all the way back to the HQ refuge. So that's at least three hexes. Here we go. We'll place them just southeast of the city of Bastogne. The engineers cannot retreat, so they are destroyed. And the 112th trains are jumped, which is going to displace them 10 hexes back up the MSR. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10. That'll put them out there just north of saint Enchamp. And the first uh, defensive position has been taken by 2nd Panzer Division. I don't think we are going to bother chasing uh, Task Force Harper. 
of CCR of the ninth up here. Uh, that's just going to be a wild goose chase out into the middle of nowhere. Second Panzer Division, um, with their last activation, has really uh, kind of reduced the uh, ability of uh, CCR to do much. So we're going to just bring the whole division on down uh, in towards Bastogne here. Let's see. Um, next, we're going to bring Kampfgruppe Gutmann. One, two, three, four, as well as the Pioneers here. One, two, three, four. And while we're here, we'll go ahead and have... Um, uh, what do we want to do? Let's, um, yeah, I guess we'll have Kampfgruppe Gutmann. I probably should have had him expend his fire vents uh, before we moved the Pioneers. Why don't we do that? Bring these guys back here. Uh, he will expend both fire vents uh, in an attack by fire on the second battalion here. They are unprepared, so they cannot take advantage of the um, support that the formation has. They are in terrain, so it's going to be a five or six to inflict a, a step loss. And there we go, two misses. Now we bring the pioneers up and we'll bring them up and then Gutmann will make the attack. We'll spend one artillery point for suppression. We have an action rating of four, dual is five, six, seven for the artillery, eight for the assist, and that's going to be an action rating three for the Americans. No support, no prepared defense. They are in terrain for a four. Eight minus four is a plus four on the combat table. And a good roll of 9 becomes a 13. It's going to be a D2 and automatic retreat for 2nd Battalion. It's going to place them in their HQ refuge, which is here. So maybe we'll place them, place them, maybe we'll place them right there, just behind the Wilts stream. And... Gutmann will enter Oberwampach. And I'm going to break here to go ahead and record the losses for 2nd um, Battalion as well as the uh, Airborne Battalion. We have just a few more units of the division to move up. And let's see, let's go ahead and deploy these guys. Go one, two, um, three and a half. And we go one, two, three, four. And one, two, three, four. And one again. Let's see. Um, I'll tell you what, we're going to flip them over to their move side here. Uh, one, two, three, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, four, and five. And then we'll flip over the Panzer Battalion. We've got two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And that'll cut the road here between uh, Hoofelis and uh, Bastogne. And then finally, we'll move up the headquarters. One, two, three, one, two. Hmm. Um, maybe we'll push them a little further forward here. 
five, six, seven. Now, what do we do with the trains? The trains, do we want to leave them back where they are? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen. Um, you know what? Let's keep bringing them forward here. Um, or we're going to move the headquarters next time. It's not much. All right. Well, you know, we're going to just, we're going to leave the trains where they are. We're going to flip them out of their ghost side to their normal side. And that is going to do it for 2nd Panzer Division's activations here on the 18th. They have uh, closed up on uh, the Bastogne defenses, made their first attacks out at Majore, seized the village, and um, have started moving around actually the north side of the position and taken Noville out here. This was a second activation, but we made uh, two attacks, so it's gonna be a three or less to increase their fatigue. And the two will do so. So their fatigue level is now up to two. We'll see how that impacts them over the next few days. And that should wrap it up for 2nd Panzer Division. And that's going to send it back to the Americans. For the Americans, even though they have quite a few formations left to activate, most of the formations are either on the periphery of the battle and thus unable to make a, a real meaningful contribution during this turn, or they've been surrounded or banged up or both to the point where getting them to pass a snafu check is going to be very difficult. So the one exception to that is probably 7th Armored Division that has yet to uh, activate. And so I think we're gonna swing around here to the north and try to uh, activate 7th Armored Division out here to the west and see if we can't do something about Panzer Lair. Activating 7th Armored Division, we'll be flipping over their headquarters. And you can see their trains are on map and we have a complete MSR. It would be tempting uh, in their current position to maybe put them into a prepared defense, except the vast majority of the formation's units, in fact, I think all of the formation's units, except this single armored engineer battalion, are dual units, which means uh, prepared defense is not going to do much as far as keeping them in a particular hex, uh, because all the Germans have to do is drive up an AV unit of their own, engage them on the engagement table, usually with an advantage, and get a target loss and retreat. So for that reason, we're not going to consider putting 7th Armored into a prepared defense. And uh, as the old saying goes, the best defense is a good offense. So 7th Armored Division is going to try to counterattack here again to uh, restore the situation similar to what they did yesterday when they hit uh, 116th Panzer Division pretty hard. You can see uh, the main concern right now is this thrust by Panzer Lair coming up from the south towards the headquarters located here at Vilsong. The Lair Division is nowhere near as scattered as 116th Panzer was yesterday and 7th Armored Division is not nearly as strong as they were yesterday, despite getting, uh, what, four or five uh, AV replacement steps uh, overnight. So it's going to be a little bit more difficult today to push back on the Germans. We had hoped to uh, clear the um, uh, Kampfgruppe here that has cut off CCB of the 9th Armored, as well as 106th, but the only units that are uh, of the 7th Armored that are even close to being able to do that are Task Force Chappie and the 87th Armored uh, Cavalry uh, Battalion. So, and even then, it's not going to be necessarily a very good attack. And to have these guys charging off to the Northeast when we've got uh, major German uh, elements coming at us from the South, Task Force Chappie, I think, is probably the... Um, uh, task force that is in the best shape, uh, perhaps Ray or maybe Fuller. Uh, Wemple has been hit pretty hard, as has uh, Task Force Brown. So 
we're going to have to figure out um, the best course of action here. Let's go ahead and uh, let's see what kind of snafu result we get, and that will give us an idea of what we're going to be capable of doing this turn. Now, the 7th Armored Division, uh, get their headquarters card on screen here for you. 7th Armored Division has a fatigue level of 1. So that's going to be uh, minus one. They're not marked with coordination, neither are they mixed. The game specific snafu is going to make that a minus two. Their trains are at optimal distance, which is a minus one. They're not ghosted crossing the streams or using tracks. So we've got just a minus one <clears throat> to seventh armor, which gives us a, a decent chance to, um, to get a full activation like they did on the 17th. And and 11 will ensure that they do indeed get a full activation. That's going to give us two objective markers. And uh, let's see, we have four organic and no assigned artillery points. So four artillery points to use this activation. Now, when they made their counterattack yesterday against 116th Panzer, it was against primarily the Panzer Battalions, and they didn't have uh, to deal with any of the Panzer Grenadiers. That won't be the case here with Lair, as the way the uh, attack has developed, they have a Panzer Grenadier Battalion in the lead, um, interestingly enough, towards uh, Vilsaw. So we can't merely just drive up and engage it with uh, our tanks and hope to drive it off like we did um, the Greyhounds yesterday. We're going to have to actually launch a, an attack here. And I think it's fairly clear that this is indeed the biggest threat right now to 7th Armored. So uh, as much as it would be nice to have Fuller try to uh, jump the 116th Panzer's uh, headquarters there, which could... Um, inconvenience the Germans a bit uh, for today. I think we're probably going to end up having to recall Fuller um, to help out with uh, with the situation here um, to the west. So I think what we're going to end up doing is let's go ahead and place both of our objective markers here. That's going to cover not only the three battalions that are posing the most immediate threat, but it also cover the uh, headquarters back here with that battalion. Um, now, we just need to figure out how we're going to push these guys back and uh, restore some semblance of uh, defensive position here. I'm going to take a look at this for a few minutes and we'll continue shortly. Looking over the situation, things do not look very good for 7th Armored at the moment. Uh, so what we're going to do is I think we're going to start off the right now the formation is down an entire task force which was eliminated task forces Wemple and Brown only have two steps each remaining Chappie and Fuller are at full strength while task force Ray has five of its six steps remaining and the 87th recon has uh, I think it's two steps left as well. So two steps here, uh, and the engineer battalion is at full strength, but uh, that's only four steps. I think we're going to do is start off with Task Force Ray. Task Force Ray is going to engage second of the 16th Panzer here. It's going to be a three plus four and a three plus four. So seven minus seven is even on the uh, engagement table with uh, target is real AV. Looking for a 9 or better, that would be nice, but uh, we'll see if maybe we can continue to attrit the 116th uh, Panzer. And we actually get a 9. That's going to be target loss and retreat. So, for 116th Panzer, their 2nd Battalion of the 16th, let's see... That's uh, They've got two steps left, so now they're down to a single step, and they're going to go three hexes back towards the HQ. I'll mark that on the loss roster. And now that's the first fire event from uh, Task Force Ray. Do we follow them down the track? I don't think so. As tempting as it would be to uh, 
uh, follow up and uh, try to just outright eliminate them. I think we may have bigger concerns. The question now is uh, back here. The question is how far can they get? You can see one, two, three, four, five. They can get to the headquarters hex here in Vilsom, but I don't want to stack an AV unit in the headquarters hex because next turn, if the Germans drive up, they'll do an engagement. Chances are they'll be able to retreat the um, unit, and uh, that means the uh, headquarters and everything else is going to be uh, retreated and jumped as well. So uh, if we go this way, it's uh, two, three, four. They'll have to drop his support. Even if they do, they're stopped here. They're not going to be able to really get this is stop terrain, stop terrain. So they can't come straight cross country here. Huh. You know, that's interesting. Maybe, you know what? Maybe they don't worry about everything else and they just follow these, uh, follow the retreating panzers up. That's two, three, four, and we'll do another even engagement. And in this case, if we can get a six or better, uh, that will inflict a step loss, and it'll be the last step loss of 2nd Battalion for the 116th Panzer. And we just missed another target loss and retreat. Instead, it is, in fact, both loss. But that's going to be good enough to eliminate the 2nd Battalion of uh, the 16th Panzer Regiment. And then Task Force Ray will take its 2nd uh, step loss. I'm going to pause here to mark those off, and we will continue in just a moment. I think I may have misspoken just a moment ago. That uh, The step loss from that uh, exchange, that last engagement, is actually reduces Ray to half strength. He's got three steps left, although the uh, the aggression uh, on the part of the American tankers has, uh, has paid off because 116th Panzer is down to just one step of... Uh, of tanks left, they do have a uh, full-strength Kampf Group uh, Stefan up here, but uh, 7th Armored Division has really kind of uh, gutted 116th Panzer over the last two days, uh, not without losses uh, to themselves, however. So, I think we are going to do something a little unusual here. We're going to put Fuller onto his deployed side. And again, as tempting as it would be to uh, continue to press on 116th Panzer, I don't think we have to worry about them uh, too much for the next day or two or maybe three. So he is going to turn around and come back to the west. One, two, entering the AV Zoc from the support unit of Lair. He's going to either have to stop or do a stopping engagement. It's not a required stopping engagement because it's only a support unit that's exerting it, but we are going to attempt to uh, drop the uh, the support. Fuller has three plus four is seven. The action rating unit on the uh, on the German battalion is a four, and Lair has a very good support unit of four, so that's eight. So it's actually going to be a minus one but we're using the uh, target is support row on the engagement table. So a seven or better is what uh, Fuller will need to roll. And he manages that with an eight, becomes a seven. That is a target drop. So that will temporarily drop his support and that will enable Fuller to continue moving. So he's gone one, two so far. He's gonna go three and a half where he will encounter another AV Zock from the other Panzer Grenadier Battalion here. Um, does he want to? Does he want to uh, engage him, or is he uh, happy to just stop there? He has, um, in effect, interrupted the MSR. Although Lair can still trace, I think, uh, to in the other direction up here and then down the road out to the west. So with that in mind, Fuller will go ahead and do another stopping engagement. This time, however, uh, while the Germans have an, uh, an action rating of three plus four for their uh, AV is a total of seven, Fuller is also three plus four, but the hex is within the double objective zone. So Fuller is actually going to get a plus one on this engagement. And his nine... 
comes a 10, which is a target drop. So we'll do that. And now with his um, two fire events used up, he is stopped. But I think we're going to go ahead and make an attack. That's one of the nice things about the American armored divisions are that these task forces are almost all dual task forces. So not only do they get to uh, use two fire events like the uh, like a pure uh, AV unit, but uh, they've also got the infantry along with them to make a regular combat attack. It may not be the best attack, but if we can jump the HQ here of Lair, we, um, we might be able to disrupt them uh, on their next activation. So let's see what the attack's going to look like. We will spend one artillery point of our four to uh, lay down a suppression barrage. Our action rating is a four. We are a dual unit, which makes it five. We are in a uh, double objective zone six, seven, eight for the artillery, and uh, that's going to be it. The defenders have an action rating of only three. They no longer have support because it was dropped in the engagement. They are not in prepared defense. They are in terrain, so it's a four for the defenders. This actually isn't that bad of an attack. We have a plus four on the uh, regular combat table. Let's see what happens here. They only need to roll, well, basically anything but snake eyes, and they will, uh, they will be able to enter the, the hex. Let's see what happens here. They rolled a seven, becomes an 11. That's gonna be a D1 and automatic retreat. So what's going to happen is we are going to inflict a step loss on the first of the 902nd. Then they need to retreat. Unfortunately, they are less than three hexes from their HQ refuge, which means they're actually going to come off map. I'll go ahead and take this support off. They're going to come off map and will show up on next turn's reinforcement phase at the, uh, at the headquarters. And uh, they will have suffered a step loss for their troubles. Now... Fuller is able to enter the hex, which has jumped the uh, Panzer Lair headquarters. Panzer Lair headquarters needs to displace three hexes, and I think they will go one, two, three down here to the Pioneers. However, they are going to be marked with a coordination marker. The trains are already flipped, and there's no prepared defense, but the coordination is going to saddle them with, a, um, with an additional minus one snafu DRM uh, next turn when they go to activate on their first activation. So um, a fairly successful counterattack here from Task Force Fuller. Uh, drove by, shot up some uh, Yogg Panzers, shot up some more Yogg Panzers, and then drove off the uh, Panzer Grenadiers and the headquarters. Now, I think we'll go ahead and uh, mark those losses, and I'll mark the uh, headquarters that has retreated. Let me go ahead and slide this a bit up here so you can actually see what's going on. Uh, the headquarters that retreated here, I'll mark them as uh, uh, coordinated and then we'll continue. With that done, we'll continue on here. And there's not a real good, the terrain around here is not terribly good. We've got this one road coming up here. We've got the stream <clears throat> that uh, is making life a little bit difficult we need to uh, clear the Panzer Grenadiers out in order to get to the uh, Panzers behind them. Um, so I think what we may do, we're going to go ahead and definitely put Wemple on his deployed side. And actually, let's, let's do Brown first. All right, so Brown will go on his deployed side. He's going to go one two and a half, and he will enter the AV Zoc of 2nd Battalion of the 902nd. Again, it's just like the uh, other battalion here. Brown has a three plus four is seven, plus one for the double objective zone is an eight. The uh, Germans have a four action rating and a four AV value for a total of eight, so it's an even roll on the uh, targeted support line. A six is not a great roll, but it's just what's needed to drop the support there. 
And then uh, Brown will go ahead and use his second fire event to do an attack by fire on the Germans there in terrain. So it's gonna be a five or six to get a hit. A two will miss. He's now stopped, but he will go ahead and make a regular uh, attack on the uh, Panzer Grenadiers. We will spend another point of artillery for a suppression barrage. And that's gonna make the attack a four, dual is five, double objective zone six, seven, eight for artillery. And that's gonna be four, no support, no prepared defense, but we are in terrain. So that's gonna be a five. It's gonna be a plus three again on the uh, regular combat table. Uh, we'd like to get an eight or better to uh, really uh, succeed here. And that's exactly what they got, another eight comes in 11, that's a D1 automatic retreat. The Panzer Grenadiers will take a step loss and they will retreat, flip to their move side. They will retreat back to the HQ refuge, which maybe we'll place them here. And Task Force Brown moves into the, moves into the hex here. So a successful attack there by um, one of the, another one of the 7th Armored Division Task Forces. And now we're gonna bring Task Force Chappie down from the Northeast. One, two, three, four. He's gonna move into the, ah, do I wanna do that? Because now they're stacked. Oh boy. Um, you know what? Yeah. We're, yeah, we're just gonna do it, why not? All right, he is now uh, in the AV Zoc of 2nd Battalion of the 130th, and it is, he's required to do at least one stopping engagement. So he's gonna be a three plus four, seven becomes an eight with the uh, double objective zone. The Germans have a four AV and four action rating, so eight minus eight, straight up roll on the engagement table. This time the target is real AV, we're gonna need a six or better to uh, kill one of those German steps. And we unfortunately do not get that. That is a fire or loss and traffic. So that'll be a loss for Chappie and we will have to place traffic in the hex, which uh, is gonna bog things down. We're gonna go ahead and take another shot at it them though. Again, it's gonna be uh, no modifier to the roll, net zero. And uh, things swung the other way. That nine is a target loss and retreat. So we're actually going to uh, end up across the two engagements uh, with an exchange. One, two, three. Each side having lost uh, one step. Let me go ahead and mark those down and then we should come back. I think I'll be able to finish up the uh, activation well, there's not much left to do uh, with the division here. We are going to pull the Armored Recon um, Squadron back here to the crossroads where uh, Chappie started the turn. And again, that's uh, to protect uh, against any attacks coming down from the Northeast or the uh, Panzer Grenadiers here. And then we will put Wemple onto his deployed side. We're going to leave him out of combat, but we are going to move him down the road here, I think. Uh, we're going to do that. No. You know what? Let's not let anybody slip in behind Task Force Ray. So instead, we're going to go one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half. No, we'll stay right there. Um, and that's it for 7th Armored Division, at least for their first activation. We'll go ahead and clean this up, move the objective markers. Uh, get the traffic out of there. So, looks like it uh, can pay to be aggressive with your armored formations. The Americans, you know, they, they can afford to sustain reasonably heavy casualties. This actually wasn't all that costly for them. And you can see how they have pushed the uh, Germans back to the south here. And they still are um, exerting some pressure on uh, 116th Panzer over here to the east. So all in all, a good activation for 
7th Armor Division, and if they get the opportunity to get a second activation, they uh, might be able to continue to beat up on Panzer Lair as well as 116th Panzer. So there are no isolation uh, effects to implement. We're going right to fatigue. They made um, a couple of regular combat, so a three or less to increase their fatigue level. And that four means they're gonna remain at fatigue level one. Now, uh, they'll need a four, five, or six to get a second activation. And they do indeed get a second activation with a six. So the snafu roll is going to be the same. They still have a fatigue of one. So that's going to be minus one along with the game specific is minus two. Trains are at optimal distance, so plus one, uh, giving us a net minus one to the snafu roll. And if they, uh, they're hoping to get another, hoping to get another, um, full activation, but even a partial will allow them to uh, continue to engage the Germans here. They just barely get a partial. The four becomes a three, so that's going to be just one objective zone or objective marker, and their four artillery points will be halved to two. Um, not sure where... We might want to place the uh, objective marker. I'm going to take a few minutes to think this over, and then we'll uh, then we'll get right into the second activation. I think we're going to place the objective marker on the Panzer Grenadier Battalion out here. Uh, the obvious uh, location might have been uh, von Falois here, except the single objective marker doesn't do any good for us in the engagements and since all of our units that will be potentially attacking in this area are dual units um, we will have to engage von Fawal rather than be able to just outright attack him unless uh, he stands his ground and we just uh, get a couple of exchanges in on our fire vents out here we might be able to if things go well we might be able to at least spot for some artillery rounds and maybe use our two artillery points to uh, try to inflict some step losses on the infantry there. So we'll start off with Task Force Chappie. He is going to advance one hex here, setting up an engagement with Von Falois. It is uh, three AV plus four on the action rating to a four AV plus five. So it's a minus two on the engagement. Uh, this doesn't bode too well for Chappie. He's going to need at least an 8 in order to inflict a loss on uh, on the Germans. And that is definitely not an 8. It's going to be fire loss and traffic. So we will try one more time. Again, needing uh, an 8 on the dice or better with a minus 2. And he rolled a 6, which unfortunately becomes a 4. And that is, again, fire loss and traffic. So two step losses for Chappie as they are brought to a dead halt by the uh, German recon unit there. I think then we are going to bring up Fuller. We're going to have him attempt the same thing. Again, it's another um, AV3 action rating 4 versus an AV4 action rating 5. So minus 2 for Task Force Fuller. And wow, the uh, seventh AD has gone cold here. That's fire loss and traffic. And the second engagement is a six, which becomes a four again. So two losses for Fuller. So um, Von Fawois, apparently seventh armor division has found the, uh, the German unit in Lair who is willing to stand and fight. I'm going to go ahead and mark off the losses for the two American units as well as get a traffic marker for Fuller, and then we'll continue. We're going to leave Task Force Brown in place here. However, we are going to shift uh, Wemple one, two, three, and a half, put them um, to the northeast. I don't think the 87th uh, Cavalry uh, Squadron here is going to be able to hold off um, the Germans if they make a concerted effort down this road. So Wemple will uh, will backstop the 87th there, and then that's going to uh, necessitate 
pulling Ray back one, two, and we'll leave him right there at the crossroads. And I think that's going to do it for the uh, second activation here for 7th Armored Division. It was a uh, disappointing activation, um, to say the least. Uh, we lost four steps to no losses for the Germans here. Uh, so perhaps it's signs of 7th Armored Division sort of reaching the uh, end of its rope, getting a little fatigued perhaps. Um, speaking of which, we'll roll for that now. We did a couple of engagements, which are two a, or which make a fatigue roll of two or less, which is the same as it being a second activation. So uh, three or better, and they'll retain their fatigue one level. And with the six, they indeed do that. And that will complete seventh armored division uh, for the 18th here. So far, over the first three days of the battle, uh, really, they've only been involved in two days of uh, fighting, but uh, they are so far holding their own. They're getting a bit chewed up now. They definitely are going to require a lot of replacements, and they're going to require uh, some help here shortly, but they have really blunted uh, the German attack by uh, uh, seriously attriting the tank strength of two panzer divisions here in the central sector. So, uh, 7th AD is uh, definitely definitely carrying its load so far for the Americans here. Uh, but now it's back to the Germans to see what uh, to see what they can do. Now the Germans are going to bring it back around to the southern sector of the battle with the advance of uh, 2nd Panzer Division here to the west. You can see there's quite a gap here with uh, Clairvaux exposed. The Germans don't want to risk any um, lunge by the uh, either the 112th or CCR of the 9th Armored Division to come down and forcing them to have to uh, clear this uh, city yet again. So what they're going to do is they're going to activate the 150th Panzer Brigade and have them move up to uh, sort of screen the um, rear of 2nd Panzer Division out here to the west. Activating 150th, we'll turn the headquarters over here. We have our trains on map. They're back to the east. We have a complete MSR. We are not going into a prepared defense, which means it's on to the snafu check. And where is it? The 150th Panzer Brigade is not marked with coordination. It has a fatigue level of zero. The game specific, it's not mixed. The game specific is uh, plus one. The trains are at optimal distance for plus two, but they are ghosted, which brings it down to a plus one. Uh, there are no tracks, and they are crossing the streams currently with the 560th Folks Grenadier. So that's going to bring it back to an even roll. We'll see what they get here. A nine is going to be sufficient for a full activation. I don't think we're going to be placing a... Um, any objective markers, though, uh, because they are moving up primarily just um, in a defensive role. So we're going to take the headquarters here and go one, one, two, uh, one, one, two, three, two, one, two, three, three. We're going to place them in Clairvaux there along with, let's see if these guys, one, two, three. Nope, they can't make it, so we'll put the... Motorized infantry comp group with them, and then it's going to be a matter of sending these guys somewhere a little more useful. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, and one, two, three, four, five. I think that will do it, except now let's take a look at how far back. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 12, 13, 14, 15. We are going to have to move up the trains. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We're going to put them right there. That's going to do it for the uh, activation. 
And so there's no isolation effects. There's no fatigue roll because we didn't place any objective markers. And now the decision is, do we want to um, attempt a second activation? The only thing we would do with a second activation that would give us a chance to flip the units over to their deployed side. And I don't think that's worth the risk of increasing the fatigue level. So I think we're just gonna let it stand there with a single activation for the 150th Panzer Brigade. That's gonna wrap it up and we're gonna send it back over to the Americans now. The Americans are gonna stay in the south. As a matter of fact, they're gonna stay all the way in the south. They're gonna come down here and uh, they're gonna try and activate 10th Armored Division here. The goal is to have them drive up the uh, road here and uh, try to cut out an escape route for the 109th Infantry Regiment there in Dekirk. And we wanna try and do this before the Germans have a chance to uh, fill this area in and make it uh, even harder on 10th Armored. So 10th Armored up next. Activating 10th Armored Division. Uh, of course, this is 10th Armored Division minus Combat Command B, so it's really only about two thirds of the division. The uh, combat trains are on map in the same entry hex here, so we have a complete MSR. We're definitely not going into a prepared defense. So it's over to the snafu table. They are not marked coordinated. They have a fatigue level of one, so that's gonna be a minus one. They're not uh, mixed. They do have the minus one for game specific, making it a minus two. Trains are at optimal distance, bring it back up to minus one. They are not ghosted. They're not crossing the streams or using track. So a minus one on the snafu roll for 10th armored. And that's not a good roll. Four becomes a three, which is a partial. So they will, in fact, get to do something. It's just not going to be nearly as much as they were hoping. We are going to place um, a, an objective marker. We're going to place it. Let me go ahead and see if I can give you a little better look at this. Pull back a bit here. You can see the... Uh, Mission for the 10th Armored is to come up here and try and assist 109th Infantry Regiment before they are forced to surrender here in Dekirk. So by placing the objective marker here, we will cover the um, 352nd uh, unit here, as well as all three Fallschirmjäger battalions that have Dekirk surrounded. The question is, are we going to be able to get there? And fortunately, we do have um, a mechanized unit with uh, what is seven or eight movement points. So they've got the movement to get there on their move side. It would have been nice if we could have stayed on our deployed side and had a little more um, AV strength, but I don't think that's actually going to be uh, actually going to make a difference at this point in time uh, because of the lack of uh, support for some of the German units here. So let me take a look at this and then we'll, uh, we'll see what 10th Armored can achieve here. All right, first thing, first thing we'll do is we'll move up the headquarters a little bit here onto the map. And then uh, first task force, we're gonna drive up one, two, three, and a half. Um, three and a half, he can go Six and a half here. He enters an AV ZOC. Actually, he does not because I don't think. No, he. Uh, there's a bridge there, so he can take his uh, support with him. So he's uh, in an AV uh, ZOC from 2nd Battalion of the 15th Fallschirmjäger Regiment here. He is not going to do a uh, stopping engagement, however, and he's not required to because of the support. So we're just going to have him stop there and then we are going to bring up one two three four and a half here and again Riley is going to decline to uh, do a stopping engagement however we are going to make an attack with task force Riley against the second of the 15th now you may be asking, why am I not attempting to uh, 
strip the support from the Fallschirm Jaeger here, and why did I turn down those two opportunities for stopping engagements? Well, the fifth Fallschirm Jaeger has some support. They have a, uh, a Stug Battalion, which is a red three, but they also have an 88 Flak Battalion, which is a standoff uh, black five <coughs> AV, which means the um, action rating of three plus the five from the 88s would give them an eight. And as you can see, the Americans have a two AV with a three action rating. So they would be rolling on the engagement uh, table with a minus three, uh, not uh, not great odds. So we'll let the uh, Falschmager retain their support in the upcoming attack here and uh, hope we can just uh, force them back across the north side of the river. Um, we have, let's see, for the partial result, we have three organic and no attached artillery assets. So the three points is half to one and a half, rounding down to a single artillery point. And we will go ahead and use it in this attack for a suppression barrage. Uh, Riley making the attack is an action rating of three. He is dual, makes it a four. Uh, five, six for the suppression and seven for the assist from Chamberlain here. The Falschmager have an action rating of three. They are supported for four. They are not in prepared defense, but they are in terrain for a five. So... We have seven to five, that's a plus two on the combat table. Not, again, not great odds. But the Americans don't need good odds, apparently. 11 plus two becomes a 13, that's a D2 automatic retreat. So, second of the 15th, we'll take two step losses. They will flip to their move side and they will end up all the way back here next to their headquarters and the headquarters refuge off to the north. So a very successful attack by Task Force Riley. Um, let me go ahead and just mark those losses off now, and then we will we'll start moving out the rest of the division. Continuing on, I'm going to bring up the 90th Armored Cav. One, two, three, and a half here. And he will use both of his fire events to uh, make an attack by fire on this Ursatz battalion here. They are in terrain, so it's a five or six. And they do get one hit on the uh, 352nd Folks Grenadier Division's Ursatz battalion. And now we'll bring up uh, Task Force Standish. One, two, three, four. Four. He likewise will use uh, his two fire events to uh, attack by fire that Ursatz battalion. And he will score a, another hit. That's uh, two step losses for the Ursatz. That leaves them with a single step. And now Standish is going to follow that up with a regular combat attack. We unfortunately have no more artillery uh, points to, uh, to give him. So it's going to be action rating three, dual unit is uh, four, no double objective zone, no artillery, and an assist from the armored cav makes it a whopping five. On the defensive side, uh, it's a action rating two, and they are uh, they have no support, they're not in prepared defense, they are in terrain for three. So another uh, plus two attack by 10th armored. And, hey, what are the odds? Never tell me the odds, right? So boxcars from Standish is a D2. That's actually going to kill the Ursatz Battalion. So even though 10th Armored Division is not necessarily as high quality as 7th Armored Division, uh, their two attacks against the uh, German infantry in the area were spectacularly successful. Uh, perhaps they caught them by surprise. Uh, the uh, Ursatz Battalion certainly had no uh, anti-tank guns or support with which to uh, hold off the Shermans. And with that, we are going to move up the Engineer Battalion with the uh, headquarters here. And I think that's going to complete the 10th Armored's first activation, which was successful. They have, in fact, opened up a, um, 
a way out of Dekirk for the 109th. They still haven't opened up an MSR, however, because the uh, zone of control here from, uh, from the Fallschirmjäger unit north will, will stop any MSR coming this way. And we have a unit here physically blocking that road and also exerting a ZOC into, uh, into that road hex there. So we're going to have to make a decision um, with 109th as to whether we want to continue to hold Dekirk or if it's time to maybe withdraw south of the river and try to rebuild the regiment and uh, continue to, to hold a defensive line further south now that we have some more um, forces in the area. But before we get into all that, we first need to apply any isolation effects, which uh, there are none, and then roll for fatigue. With two regular combats, it's going to be a three or less. They roll a six, so they remain at fatigue level one. And now we are going to attempt a second activation, but you can see it's a five or a six, which is really not very good for, uh, for a uh, armored division. Let's see what happens. And a three means they are not going to get their second activation. That's going to finish up 10th Armored Division for the 18th of December. Um, mission accomplished, sort of, but uh, we'll take it. And now back to the Germans. The Germans are going to stay in the south as well, except they're going to move it a little further out to the west here. And uh, we're going to activate 26th Volks Grenadier. We'd like to try to get a jump on uh, the 110th Infantry Division here before they have a chance to uh, get settled into a defensive position and perhaps even go into a prepared defense at this point. So next up, 26th Volks Grenadier. Activating 26th Volks Grenadier. We'll flip over the headquarters here. And uh, the trains are well off to the east. They are on map. They're back actually at Hosingen on the uh, Skyline Drive. It's 11 hexes away, so it is at uh, optimal distance. Although, uh, we've got another one, two, three, about four hexes that the headquarters can move forward before we uh, exit the optimal distance to our trains. So, uh, it's going to bring up some interesting logistical considerations here because the bridge down here at uh, Viltz has been blown, which means uh, they won't be able to trace back to the south here. They're going to have to come up this road to the N12. That's also the same stretch of road that 2nd Panzer is currently using. So we may have some crossing of streams here between 26 Volksgrenadier and 2nd Panzer over the next couple of days. Also, with Kampfgruppe uh, uh, Gutmann's attack into Weiss Vampach, they've really kind of uh, sort of shoved 26 Volksgrenadier um, into a, an area where there are no more direct east-west roads or even tracks into Bastogne. Formation looks like it may be best off crossing south of the Wilts River and then proceeding towards Bastogne uh, from the southeast. Uh, so we'll see what uh, we'll see what they're able to do here. Their primary concern in this activation is to capture Wilts and also uh, try to continue to uh, put pressure on and destroy the 110th Infantry Regiment here. So with that said, we're not going into a prepared defense, which means our snafu uh, modifiers are going to be um, not fresh for sure. They are not marked coordination. They do have a fatigue level of three, so that's a minus three. They're not mixed. They get a plus one for the game specific. Bring it to a minus two. The uh, trains are at optimal distance, minus one. They are not ghosted or crossing the streams. However, they're using tracks with poor traffic ability, which is a, another minus two. It's gonna bring it right back down to a minus three for the snafu uh, roll here for 26 volts grenadier. A six minus three becomes a three, and that is just enough to, uh, to get a pass for a partial. So this is not going to be an overwhelming activation by any means, but we'll see what uh, we'll see what they can pull off here. So actually, 
that's going to it's going to be an issue. They can either attack at wilts or they can attack the one tenth. And I think if they're serious about getting out to Bastogne, uh -huh. boy, I hate to do it. Um, yep, I guess we will. I guess we'll place the loan. Objective marker on Wilts, and we'll try to clear the uh, engineers out of there. We have three organic artillery points plus two assigned as a total of five. That's going to round down to two after being halved. And we might as well start here and get the big attack out of the way. Bring up the first of the 39th. They will launch an attack. We'll spend one point in a suppression barrage, and they will be assisted by the uh, Ursatz Battalion here. They've got an action rating of four. The 26 Volksgrenadier does have red support, as you can see, so that becomes a five. Uh, six, seven for the artillery, eight for the assist. On the defensive side, we have an action rating of two. No support, no prepared defense, but they are in a red city, which is a plus two, so that's gonna be a four. 8 minus 4 is a plus 4 on the combat table, which means they're going to need a 7 in order to get the engineers to retreat. They're able to roll an 8, which becomes a 12. That's going to be a D1 automatic retreat. It's going to force the 44th engineers out of the city and destroy them. And then first of the 39th will be able to occupy it. And now, even though the road bridge is uh, destroyed here, there is a smaller bridge just on the west side, which will facilitate getting uh, 26 Volksgrenadier units to the south bank of the, uh, of the river. And I think we'll do that. Uh, we don't want to do that. That's way too slow. I think we'll do that right now. So one two, three, four, five, six, seven. That will jump the trains there. They're gonna to have to go back 10 hexes up the MSR. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 10. That'll place them, unfortunately, right there for the Americans. That's gonna be some crossing of the streams here. Now, Kunkel, um, one tenth have support, I believe they do. Yes, they do. They have multiple supports, actually. So that would be a seven for Kunkel, and that would be a three, six, seven for the defenders. Really, no point in. Um, well, that's not true. If I manage to drop the uh, support, then um, I could always do an attack by fire on them. So I'll go ahead and do that. Uh, first fire event for Kunkel, actually. Being a Faraus unit, we could attempt to place an objective marker, which might help too. So yes, first fire event, we're going to attempt to drop the support of the engineers here in the hex with the HQ. Kunkel has an action rating of uh, two, I'm sorry, an action rating of five with an AV of two for a total of seven. The engineers have an action rating of three. The uh, They have a... Um, the 707th Tank Battalion with an AV of three for a total of six, but they also have a, a towed tank destroyer support, so multiple supports will give them a plus one. So seven to seven, it's gonna be an even roll on the uh, line of targeted support. Roll is a five, that's gonna be no effect. Um, means now there's really not much more of a point to uh, trying to drop the support because we won't be able to attack them. And there's such a low chance with the odds as they stand of actually killing any um, support step. So I think we're gonna be done there with uh, uh, Kunkel, he is stopped for failing to um, eliminate the uh, AV Zoc. 
Next we'll have, let's see, that's not very good terrain around there, is it? It is not. Um, let's see. First is 77th, go one, two. So we're gonna deploy these guys. Um, actually, let's leave them on their move side for the moment. He's gonna go one. I'm just gonna put him in the go one, two here. One, two. This will go here. One. And if we'll bring the headquarters forward. And now, what do we do with these guys? They attack, they're done. What do we do with the pioneers here? Um, and we'll bring him up there, I suppose. All right. So we've got basically the division very slowly moved up. Um, not much else we're going to be able to do here. So we'll clean things up and check for fatigue. Again, we made one attack. It's gonna be a three or less. Wow, so we have our first formation in the game to reach a fatigue level of four. That is going to preclude the 26th from even attempting to get a second activation. So they are done for the turn and uh, they may need to take, they may need take a day or two off just to try and recover some fatigue here and they are still nowhere near uh, Bastogne. So uh, disappointing performance from uh, 26 Volks Grenadier really kind of to date. Uh, it's only day three of the battle and they're already looking at a fatigue level of four which is going to seriously inhibit their ability to get some uh, full activations and be truly effective without first taking a couple of days off. So we'll hand it back to the Americans. The Americans are going to go right back to uh, the Dekirk sector, having activated 10th Armor Division and cleared out some of the uh, Germans around Dekirk. We're going to go ahead and activate the uh, 109th Regiment and see if we can't salvage part of it before the Germans close back in here around Dekirk. Now, on second thought, uh, I think we are not going to activate the 109th. Instead, we are going to shift a little further to the uh, south and east, and we are going to end up activating 4th Infantry Division here and see uh, see what kind of damage we can inflict with 4th ID. The trains are on the map, as you see here, and we have a complete MSR. They are in prepared defense, and we are going to maintain that prepared defense. So the snafu modifiers are going to be, um, let's see, what do we have? We are not coordinated. We have a fatigue level of three. And uh, here, I'll put the headquarters card out there so you can see it. They actually have quite a few supports, as you can see. And they also have quite a few artillery assets assigned to them. We've got a, let's see, back to the snafu modifiers. We've got a minus three, they're not mixed. We get a minus uh, four for the game specific, becomes a minus three for the optimal distance. No crossing of streams, no tracks, and no ghosts. So minus three to fourth infantry division. The best result we can hope for is a partial. 
and the six becomes a three, which is just what we need to get that partial. So a single objective marker to be placed. Now we have to decide where we want to place it. Obviously, we're going to have, um, we've got two organic and four attached, which is a total of six. That halves to three artillery points, um, which we intend to put to good to use um, against the Germans. Now, they're mainly facing the 212th here in the east. However, the 276th here off the uh, left flank of the division is uh, really kind of in the process of overrunning uh, CCA of the 9th Armored. So what we might do with this activation is maybe uh, provide a little bit of support here and see if we can't chew up at least the left flank of uh, the 276th with uh, Task Force Luckett and the engineers out there. And then if we decide to get a, or if we're lucky enough to get a second activation, then maybe we can uh, spread the love to 212th. So with that said, let's go ahead and we're going to flip Luckett over to his deployed side. And the Pioneer Battalion and the uh, Grenadier Battalion here both have support because they can trace a safe path uh, down around here across this bridge and then over. So Luckett will... Um, hmm. Mm -hmm -hmm. Luckett will have to drop their support. And then are we going to make an attack? Um, all right, first we will engage the pioneers here. We've got a AV3 plus an action rating of four is seven. The pioneers have an action rating of two and the 276th has, well, they have some 88s as well as some Hetzers. So the 88s are a five, that's gonna be a seven. They're gonna get a plus one for multiple supports. So actually Luckett is engaging them at a minus one on the uh, targeted support line. And they feel the effect of the 88s pretty quickly. That becomes a two. That is a firer loss and traffic. So Luckett isn't going anywhere and he's gonna take a step loss. Well, that's a pretty nasty surprise for the Americans. So I think we are going to um, I think we may forego an actual attack. Wonder. You see, we have the engineers here. They are in the village of Burdorf. If we were to attack the left flank battalion here, we would have to advance into the hex, which would place us in the open. Uh, the engineers are not as good as the rest of the division as far as their action rating goes. So I'm a little reluctant to have them, to move them out and expose them. Now they, they would still be in a prepared defense, which would uh, which would help. And I guess that's, as far as artillery is concerned, it's, it's the same, although it would be nice to get that plus one for being in terrain that we would not have were we to uh, move up there. I think, uh, yeah, you know, I think we may just, um, we may just confine ourselves to uh, firing some artillery at these guys. So let's, uh, let's do that. Let's shoot two of, our, two of our artillery points on the Pioneer Battalion here. They're in terrain, so it's gonna be four, five, or six. And they both miss. And we will fire one at the guys in the open here. So we need a three or better. Wow, that's a one. That's three misses for the fourth ID. Not a good activation. And I don't think we really want to move anybody or do anything else along those lines. So with that, we have no isolation. We will roll for fatigue. Since we did an engagement, it's going to be a two or less. 
Wow. We have our second formation, the first American formation, to reach fatigue level four. That might explain the lackluster performance on the part of uh, Luckett. Uh, fourth ID just may be reaching their physical and mental limits here after three days of nonstop combat. That is going to preclude them also from getting a second activation. So 4th Infantry Division with a uh, very underwhelming, disappointing activation for the Americans here. I don't think they're necessarily in any great danger, although as you have seen previously in the playthrough, that can change pretty quickly. Uh, with that, it's going to go back to the Germans now. The Germans are going to leave the southern flank and they're going to come back up towards the central part of the front and they're going to activate uh, 560th Volksgrenadier here in an attempt to get them to move out and uh, uh, maybe try and pick off the stragglers here from the 112th Regiment and perhaps uh, engage uh, CCR of the 9th if, uh, if they can get uh, all the way out there to them. So next up, 560th. Activating 560th, we'll go ahead and flip over the HQ to get us started. The trains are on map. They are right here. We have a complete MSR. We are not going into prepared defense. And so we need to take a look at the snafu modifiers. They are not marked coordination. Their fatigue level is a one. So that's gonna be minus one. They're not mixed. Game specific brings it up to even. Optimal distance gives them a plus one. However, they are using tracks right here with poor traffic ability. That's going to lower it to minus one. They're not ghosted or crossing the streams. So straight up minus one, four, five, sixty. That minus one actually hurts because that seven becomes a five. That is a partial activation. And I'm going to have to see if we're even going to, I don't know if we can get close enough. One two well we could make an attack there one we could make an unassisted attack on the unprepared guys i don't even think it's going to be worth it to place a um, an objective marker and risk a fatigue level increase but the activation will at least allow the 560th to get moving westwards and we can uh, redeploy our trains here perhaps to uh, give us a little better uh, logistical situation so since this looks like it's going to be a non-combat activation, I'll go ahead and uh, move everything and then pick back up at the end of the activation to show you how far they were able to get. Well, here's the division after their activation. They were able to push forward here a little bit. You can see everyone is now on the west bank of the Ur, and they moved their trains up uh, to Skyline Drive here. They are five hexes due south of the headquarters here. Uh, let's see, I don't know if we can quite, there they are. Uh, you can see them here. And now uh, we are going to, well, there's no isolation. There's actually no fatigue check. So they'll remain at fatigue one. Uh, we are gonna see if we can get a second activation though. And we need a four, five, or six. The Five will do it, so they may be able to uh, salvage something here with their second activation. Again, trains are on the map, complete MSR. They're uh, not going into a prepared defense. So the snafu roll is going to be a minus one for fatigue. It's gonna be plus one for game specific to zero, plus one for optimal distance, minus one for ghost trains, no tracks, and no crossing of streams. So uh, straight up even, um, Stafu roll, and it's uh, not a very good one. That five is going to be yet another partial. However, they are now at least close enough to uh, maybe a, make an attack on the third battalion. Since they're going to have to roll for fatigue regardless, we might as well try to get at least a little something out of it. So with that placed there, they have three organic and two attached for a total of five. That's gonna round down uh, when we have it to two artillery points. And I think we will go ahead and get started 
let's go one and a half here and then we'll bring up um, bring up second of the 1130th we're gonna have second battalion of the 1130th grenadier uh, regiment make the attack on third battalion here we will spend one of our artillery points in a suppression barrage and the action rating is three five sixtieth as you can see I think they I think they're the only German formation in the game currently that has no support um, well except for third Falschenjäger at any rate no support they uh, do not have a double objective zone, so all they have is plus two for the artillery for a five, and an assist makes it six. Now, the defenders have an action rating of three. They do have support, which is uh, which they cannot take advantage of. They're not in prepared defense, but they are in terrain, so it will be four. So it's a six to four, a plus two on the, um, on the combat table. And it's a good roll. I don't know if it's quite good enough. Uh, becomes a 12. That is a uh, D1 and automatic retreat. That's going to inflict one step loss on 3rd Battalion. And they have no safe path, which means they are not going to retreat. Instead, they are going to stay pl in place and take a second step loss. I'm going to stop here, record those step losses, and see if that uh, has eliminated 3rd Battalion yet. And in fact, they had two steps remaining, so the two step losses did in fact eliminate 3rd Battalion. We will go to the dead pile, and we will continue on with the rest of the activation. It will consist merely of these units continuing to move forward. Um, two here, and Pioneers will go one. Half, bring him up, and I'll go one. I think we'll leave him there then. So they slowly moving westwards. They did finish off one of the battalions of the one twelfth, trying to get away. Um, but we'll see now whether or not that cost them a fatigue level increase. Three or less. And it did. So they're going to increase to fatigue level two. And that is going to be all for the 560th here on the 18th of December. And I think that's probably going to do it for this particular episode. We have uh, 26 formations total remaining in the turn out of 39 altogether uh, left to activate. So we're right at one third of the way through the turn. However, a uh, lot of the remaining formations uh, on the American side are uh, pretty chewed up and uh, may end up, if they don't fail the activate, the snafu roll outright, uh, they're looking at partials and they're probably going to have some fairly short and quick uh, activations and then on the German side they've got three formations at least that will be doing nothing but driving uh, this uh, this turn so those should be fairly quick as well I don't know if we'll be able to get through all 26 formations in the next episode but certainly uh, two more episodes should wrap up the 18th and then we'll be on to the 19th so that's going to do it for today thanks again for watching